A uh, little disclaimer. Now, if you don't feel comfortable changing this filter capacitor, or if you attempt it and you damage your radio, I can't be held liable. If you need any assistance, drop me a line. All right, well, the first step, of course, is remove your covers, flip your R4 receiver upside down, and then we need to get access to the filter cap, who's hidden under this jack here and right next to this transformer, and you see a bunch of wires, but don't let that intimidate you. It's really not that bad of a thing to get to. All right, so let's uh, get this headphone jack removed. Spin the knob off him. And we're gonna flip it out of the way so you can get access to that filter cap. All right, I highly recommend for your own reference that you make yourself a little sketch of how the original cap's in there in reference to the side of the radio and then showing the wires connected to the different sections of the cap. All right, now for the easy removal, now this may seem a little scary, I'm gonna take some wire cutters and what we're gonna do is get right underneath the terminal of the cap and we're gonna clip those terminals off so that you keep the wires going to the terminal and you'll have a road map then instead of unwiring them down this little hole. All right, so now you can see I've got the wires all disconnected, just simply cutting the lugs off the filter cap. Lost my little 1K resistor in the process, but I think you can afford a nickel there. So they're all in the same position they were in before. So now what we need to do is remove the filter cap, drop it out, and we'll bring our new cap in from the bottom side. All right, so as you'll notice, there's a couple uh, bent over tabs on the left and right side of the cap here, okay? And then there's uh, one in the front and one in the rear, and they're actually soldered. So the easiest way to get this out is using a Dremel tool. I'm going to grind this first tab here that you can get access to, and I'm going to grind that right off, and then I'll show you how easy the cap comes out. All right, so where you're grinding, of course, be very careful of your other wiring and, uh, you know, transformers and things so you don't damage them in the process. All right, so I've got the tab ground off, and as you can see, a pull, you can see the cap's moving now, okay? So it's, it's loose from that front solder point. All right, now before I flip it, I'm gonna take a vacuum. We're gonna get the metal shavings out of here so we don't contaminate other components. All right, so before we rock the cap out, you can see the, the two tabs here. There's one here, and there's one over here that aren't soldered. Now, if you can get something underneath of those and just rock them up a little, little bit, whether you use a dental pick like I do, I've got a real strong one here, I can bend them up. Uh, if you can do that, it really uh, makes the removal process a lot easier. If not, it'll still come out. All right, we're back top side. Now, a good idea is to remove your audio tube so you don't break it in the process of rocking out the filter. You can see it's awful loose already. All right, so now it's time to rock the cap out, okay? Now, I'd recommend you use a screwdriver, get it under the sedge, and just kind of lift it and she'll come up okay because it's just unbending those tabs okay so now it's loose just rock him and it will fatigue that solder connection and it'll come out all right so as you can see the old cap you've lost the two tabs and the other two just bent as it popped off so now you're ready to install the new cap all right, so the new cap is specially designed to fit right into the filter cap hole. It'll drop right in. All we're going to have to do now is get it positioned properly and put in a couple sheet metal screws to hold it. Bottom side again, you're going to bring in your cap and you want to orient it to where the 20 microfarad section faces to the left. If you uh, take a look at the diagram, the sketch you made, you'll see why. And that'll make sure that all the wires line right back up and hook up easy without having to extend them. Alright, so we have the cap oriented properly. And now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to mark the two holes where we're going to drill. Okay, and you'll want to just be very careful. Yeah, there's wiring underneath. But the way this is configured, it will um, miss that wiring and it'll install like a champ. Alright, my holes are marked. And to verify the wiring will clear, 
just take your finger and put it under those two edges and you'll see that there's no wiring there so you're not going to hurt anything and then take your center punch get on your marks that you made punch them and we'll draw them out here in a second all right i've got my holes punched verified clearance let's do a little drilling here all right so we got the cap in place putting the last sheet metal screw here and at this point the hardest part of the job is over now it's just a matter of doing a little bit of soldering underneath all right back bottom side now you got your choice you can take these old lugs and you can solder them right on the the new lugs on the socket and it'll do the job me being the perfectionist i am i'm going to take the time desolder all this stuff solder them on the lugs because this cap's going to make this radio run another 20 years the other thing that uh, I, I need to explain is there's a negative line on this cap okay you can see the negative stripe on the little cap here that line needs to be soldered to the chassis you do not want to rely on the flange of the socket for a good ground connection all right well first then we'll solder the uh, ground runner and uh, the location of this ground lug is is on the little diagram that you'll be supplied with with the cap now the ground I'm going to hook back to uh, the original solder tab that we ground off there's still solder there where the original cap was soldered so you're going to need some serious heat like one of these old Weller monsters okay and you're going to get down there and solder that ground connection all right I have my little ground lead installed going down the chassis now we'll concentrate on getting the other uh, terminals hooked up. All right, I have uh, three of the sections completed. Now the fourth one has five red and white wires that all went to the same terminal. You're going to find that's a real bear to work with. So what I do is I join them all together. So they're corralled together there, and I have one runner. And then I'll put some heat shrink over that, and that'll make the last connection a lot easier. All right, everything's connected. And to be a good idea, like what I'm doing right now, I'm taking you through a magnifying glass, okay? Take a look at your work through a magnifying glass, make sure you didn't short anything out. And of course, best practice, take a meter and check for shorts before you apply power to the radio. When reinstalling your audio jack, use caution. Make sure that it's not touching those terminals. On this one, I had to bend one of the cap terminals down to clear the back side of the uh, audio jack. All right, so I have the jack installed and uh, plenty of clearance. Everything looks good. I'll fire it up here in a minute. I just want to point out that while you're in here, there's a couple other electrolytics you might want to take a look at. There's one down here on the audio tube. It's a little 10 microfarad. You ought to change that. There's a 1,000 microfarad back here in the rear that could use a changing. There's another one sitting here. I believe that's about 8, 8 or 10 microfarad. And then there's one kind of huddled down here underneath this board, another little 10 microfarad. And that's pretty much all for electrolytics. So if you're going to go through the pain of changing this filter cap, you should change all those too. All right, well, here's the little R4B back in action with the new filter capacitor installed. And if you want one of these for your R4B, contact DLab Electronics at www.dlabamps.com. Thanks.